Welcome to our Ultimate 12K Gaming System. That's a resolution of 11,520 by 2160. Take that, consoles. Samsung has graciously sponsored us with these three U28D590D 4K monitors, so Anthony got to working designing a system that would make use of them. We tried triple 4K in the past when the Titan Black and Titan Z came out, but they simply couldn't handle the amount of pixels. But now, with the new Titan X and its 12 gigs of VRAM, this should be a bit more interesting. So let's go over the components and why we went with each. First up, the case. As you can see, Anthony chose the Corsair 780T in bright yellow. Why yellow? Because you can't buy it anymore and he has a weird habit of using cases that you actually can't buy anymore. But it does come in white or black and it offers plenty of filtered airflow. If you want a review of that, click here for the review I did. Other Corsair parts include their H110i GT liquid CPU cooler and the AX1500i power supply. We went with the H110i instead of a custom loop because it offers more than enough cooling performance for the CPU alone. If we added the four extra video cards into the custom loop with the CPU, then our CPU temps might actually have gone up. The power supply was an easy choice. Each Titan X has a TDP of 250 watts and our processor needs 140 watts. Under full load, our system draws 1200 watts of power from the wall. Speaking of the processor, we went with the 5930K Intel 6 core processor with 40 PCI Express lanes. It's more than adequate for games and we saw no tangible benefit for going with the 5960X. If you think it's not ultimate enough though, then just pretend it's the 5960X since gaming performance will be the same between them. Our motherboard is the ASUS Rampage 5 Extreme. It features almost everything you could ever need in a motherboard. External overclocking and monitoring controller, 8-phase power system, spacing for 4-way SLI, Supreme FX sound, and even additional power connectors for the CPU and PCIe slots. For memory, HyperX sponsored us 64 gigs of the Predator DDR4 series RAM. Yes, we know we don't need 64 gigs for games, but come on, just take a look at how good it looks with every slot filled. Along with the RAM, we're using two HyperX Fury 240GB SSDs and RAID 0 for the fastest performance. RAID 0 is risky, but we actually couldn't fit any PCIe SSDs into the slots, well, for obvious reasons. And any M.2 drives we have on hand were actually slower than our RAID 0 setup. We've also got NVMe SSDs on the way, but that will be for another video. Finally, our video cards. We're using four ASUS Titan X graphics cards and four-way SLI. That's over $5,000 in just video cards alone. Yes, Anthony's a lucky guy to get to play with all of this hardware. Big shout out to Thomas from Cable Mod who gave us a kit of their new sleeve cables. They're direct replacements for Corsair and EVGA power supplies and not just extensions, so you won't end up with miles of cables in the back of your case. What do you guys think of Anthony's cable management job? Leave a comment down below. All right, enough jibber jabber. So here's the part you all waited for, how it performs. Obviously it's good. Fire Strike Ultra, 10,329 points. We got a maximum boost clock of 1342 Hertz on each card from GPU boost. Temperatures were good as well with a maximum temperature of 70 degrees each while being completely silent. And we ramped up the fans to 100% speed under load and the cards only reached a maximum of 39 degrees. But, but, but Jack, like what about games? Well, this setup will let you max out all the settings in any game you want and get an average FPS over 60 in 1080p, 1440p, 4K, ultra wide, triple 1080p, triple 1440p, everything except triple 4K. Anthony has been playing GTA 5 nonstop for the past two weeks, so that's where we started. On paper, the results look fantastic. Using GeForce Experience Game Optimizer, we're able to get very high detailed settings and an average FPS of 62. The minimum was 32 FPS, which goes to show just how well NVIDIA optimizes your settings. It sounds good, but what you can't see in benchmarks is the amount of micro stuttering. In fact, there's so much of it that it's not even micro, it's actually just stuttering. In both the benchmark and in-game, we noticed significant amounts of stuttering to the point that it's unplayable. Anthony used the latest GeForce 350.12 drivers and noticed no difference even after adjusting triple buffering or the number of pre-rendered frames. Triple 4K is simply still too much to handle right now with our current architectures. 
It's not just GTA 5 either. We decided to try with Far Cry 4 and Battlefield Hardline as well. Far Cry 4 was actually unplayable with broken textures and glitches everywhere. Frame rates looked amazing, but it means nothing if it looks like that. Hardline worked, but also suffered from the same problem. At higher settings, we simply couldn't get enough FPS to play smoothly. At lower settings, we could get high frame rate, but the settings were turned down so low that it wasn't even worth it. It also stuttered, but far less than Far Cry. Alright, so games are out the window. What about applications? We use Adobe Premiere Pro CC and After Effects CC a lot here, and there are some pros and cons to a setup like this. Premiere will only use one graphics card for real-time playback, so no difference there. For rendering and exporting, it will heavily depend on your composition, but in short, no. Premiere will not see a significant boost in rendering performance. In fact, getting our drivers and software to actually detect multiple graphics cards took days, and it still only intermittently works. If rendering performance is a big priority for you, get a Quadro. It's a similar story with After Effects. Most effects are processed with the CPU, with the biggest exception being ray tracing. You can see a full breakdown of what is and isn't rendered on the GPU by checking the link in the description below. One request we had was for Octane Render, which is known to have excellent GPU rendering and scaling. We ran Octane Bench and noticed some amazing results. A single Titan X gave us a result of 136 points, while four cards gave us a score of 460. Not a perfect one-to-one -one scale, but it's a pretty significant increase per card. And there you have it. We're a bit disappointed to know that triple 4K is still not possible, but it's really not that big a deal. Everyone here in the studio actually prefers playing on just one 4K monitor, and this system easily handled that. Better yet, one ultra-wide curved monitor will give you the best combination of detailed graphics, immersion, and still be easy to power with just one video card. There are many work applications for a setup like this, but at that point you should really be looking at Quadro cards. For anyone else looking for gaming performance, the sweet spot is two cards at most. Three cards will yield diminishing returns, and four cards ends up being a big pain to configure. That wraps it up for this video. Thank you so much for watching and let us know what you think the ideal monitor setup for gaming is. As always, be sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX. We'll see you later.